This is the Sales Gravy Podcast. I'm Jeb Blunt, best-selling author of Fanatical Prospecting Sales EQ, Objections and Inked, and I'm here to help you fill up your pipeline, close bigger deals, and rock your commission check. On this episode, I continue my conversation with Matthew Pollard on why introverts can sell. And Matthew and I talk about a technique that will help you make better choices in emotional moments called the this or that technique. Before we get started, though, if you are an introvert and you struggle with negotiation, you're going to want to go get my brand new book called Inked. Inked is the ultimate guide to sales negotiation, and it will give you all the tools that you need to confidently approach the sales negotiation table and win with today's savvy buyers. You can pick up Inked right now at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Google Play, iTunes, or wherever books are sold. Now, here's my conversation with Matthew Pollard, author of The Introvert's Edge, on the this or that technique. Influence is derived from what you hear, not what you say. And, and so the gift of gab doesn't mean anything. Talking people into things doesn't mean anything. People don't even care about what you're talking about. It seems this happen over and over and over again. I booked a speech the other day ago because a guy calls me up and he says, how much does it cost for you to do blah? And I said, I said, I, you know, let's, let me ask you a couple of questions because I'm not sure I'm a fit for you just using that process. And uh, he worked for a nonprofit. And I said, why, why, why do you work with this nonprofit? Like, what, what was your passion in doing that? The guy talks for 45 minutes. And at the end of the call, he says, I have this much. Will you take it? The difference in that was I shut up and listened. Now, I have to step on my tongue because I'm, you know, I've got that, that outcome-driven, you know, transactional nature. So I have to let it come to me. But I understand that because that's human nature. I understand that when he's talking, he's getting this dopamine drip into the pleasure center of his brain. It makes him like me more. It creates a deep emotional connection system. All of this is system mm -hmm. because human beings are incredibly predictable. And I know how human beings work. So I'm just, I'm just letting him go. And he feels good about it. I mean, he's, he's like, I really like this person. And this person really gets me and understands me. And I didn't have to do anything. The problem with people who have the gift of gab, they talk too much, is they're really not that great salespeople. I mean, I spent a, so much of my time teach, teaching people who like to talk to shut up. Th that's the hard problem. The problem that I have with more, more introverts than, than extroverts is, with extroverts is would you shut up? And with introverts is when you ask for what you want. I mean, that's, so those two things, you said something else there that was powerful, but I, I, you minimized it. And I, I want to bring it back up again, because it was powerful and profound. And you started playing on the, what do I want methodology? So as an introvert, when I'm in situations where I feel uncomfortable, I just ask myself this, do I want this more than I want that? So in my marriage, right? Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Like, it's a really simple question for me. So when I'm about to get into an argument with my wife over something, I just ask myself this question. Do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? <clears throat> I can be right, but I can't be right and happy at the same time. So when I'm with a customer and they say, let's go to lunch or let's go to dinner, I go, do I want to be alone or do I really want to make money and build my business and do a good job for my family? And so in that, in that situation, I'm able to use what do I want to get over the hump of the, the temporary, I guess, you know, pain that I feel in, in stepping out of my normal box. And, and that was, you, you just brushed over that, but it was a really powerful thing because when you deploy that particular process, what do I want more? in any conversation with another human being, it will help you rise above the disruptive emotions that are holding you back and accomplish your goal in that particular moment. Because what it does is it gives your, your, your neocortex or your executive brain the ability to get in control of your limbic system, which for introverts is a problem because it drives our emotions and make the right rational decision in an emotional moment. I think, Jeb, one of the things that's interesting, though, is introverts a lot of times haven't really asked themselves that question in the longest time because we're all about helping other people and doing things for people. So one of the exercises, and, you know, I've, I've got a podcast called Better... Well, it's, it, I have another podcast that's aligned with the book, The Introvert's Edge, where we interview a lot of really successful introverts. But going back to the topic you're talking about, one of them is called Better Business Coach. And there's an episode 
it's episode 17, forget about goals, why is the key to success? And what was interesting is what I get people to do is really write three business or career goals and three personal goals. And any high achiever can do this, right? We write our goals really quickly, but that's really a means to an end. The problem is I find a lot of people tend to inherit their goals from their mother, their father, I don't know, drunk roommate they had in college. They just hear them and they're like, yes, that's what I'm gonna go after. And while an extrovert is happy to just charge, an introvert struggles to muster that fire in their belly, even if they think they wanna run a business or be in sales, because it's important to make great money. So for an introvert, a lot of times, and this works with extroverts as well, I find a lot of high achievers, they can write the goal really quickly, but it's the second part of the exercise where I get them to summarize each one of those goals in 250 words or less, including why it's important to them. A lot of times, they struggle to really articulate that, and it's because it wasn't that important to them. So as soon as they start to do that, they start to rewrite their goals because they have to really think about them. What is it that I truly want? And then they start to write about their passions, their purpose, their driving why. Until you have that, it's impossible to ask that question, what's going to make me happy? Because you don't truly know. But in truth, I mean, this is, I mean, going back to neuro-linguistic programming techniques even, you know, we, we experience 2 million bits of information every single second. Our brain's a supercomputer, but it processes 126. So we delete, distort, and generalize everything we see, feel, hear, and smell based on our beliefs, our values, our past experiences, and a subset of that is our goals. So while I'd like to think I'm a great coach, in truth, just getting people laser focused on what I want, and more importantly, why they want it allows them to see opportunities that are right there in front of them and makes them able to make decisions like what you just highlighted. Because the problem that people have is in that instant, right? The problem is that they're like, well, what's going to make me happy? Well, I'm working on two businesses right now. So I'm in a networking event. Which one should I talk about? Well, if you had a clear focus, then you wouldn't ask that question because one would be the obvious choice. So for me, you know, I know I'm put on this earth to help small business owners succeed and grow. And that was my whole focus around the book was to help the small business service provider really talk about themselves in a way that didn't get them unstuck. But then when I started to have people come to me with all these business opportunities, unless it aligned with rapid growth for small business, I went, no. Then when I redid my goals, because there was a lot of need for this book, and you know, I started to share the story of my introversion, people would come out and actively say, you know, I'm disenfranchised because I feel like I can't do this. So I went, okay, I'm willing to help introverts too. And I now speak on, you know, one of my, my biggest keynotes is the story playbook. And I teach tech professionals and, you know, highly complex individuals how to create rapid growth in their story. And the thing that I find by just shifting and focusing on those two sectors, I still have that absolute laser focus. And because of that, I can still make easy and practical decisions. I think the problem that most people have is that they can't make those decisions because they don't know what they truly want and they haven't made a logical decision. You know, any customer is a good customer. Any business is a good customer, right? And I can just, there's one thing I've learned. I mean, I can create rapid growth out of any business. You know, I'm responsible for five multi-million dollar success stories myself, but I promise you there is nothing worse than a rapid growth business with customers you can't stand in a business you hate being part of. And there's nothing worse than selling a product you don't like either. No matter, I mean, you're just going to spend all that money you make on items that are trying to fill the soul of that empty person that's just going about their life. And I, so I think that it's a really important, you know, you're right. We, we, I, I, did, I glossed over it because I didn't want to focus too much on that. But for a lot of people, if the pain's not worth the gain, then don't do it, right? Don't listen to what other people say is important. Realize what's important to you. Turn off your technology and just go and do that exercise, right? Really think about what it is that you want. Then talk to your husband or wife about it and make sure that you guys are both congruent about that. And then start making the business career life decisions that you need to make. And then the question that you asked yourself, it comes like that. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Sales Gravy Podcast. I hope that you'll be able to take the this or that technique and deploy it in your sales day and make sure that you go to Barnes & Noble, to iTunes, to our iBooks, to Google Play, to Amazon and pick up a copy of my brand new book, Inked. It will help you negotiate better and I guarantee it's a book that will help you make more money this year.